Hello children, today we are going to start with the very basic thing of biology that is cell which is included in almost every class after cell. Now what is cell? Actually cell can be defined as a unit of biological activity delimited by a differentially permeable membrane and capable of self reproduction in a medium free of other living systems. If I simplify this definition it can be like this. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. So all the organisms whether they are plants or animals their functional unit is cell they are made up of cells and the branch of biology which deals with the study of cell and cell organelles is known as cytology or it can also be called as a cell biology. Now regarding the history of the cell Robert Hooke was the first person who has coined the term cell for very small structures in a piece of cork under a microscope in 1665. This observation was published in his book named Micrographia. The cell which was discovered by Robert Hooke, it was actually a dead cell. The first living cell was discovered in 1674 by A. V. Leeuwenhoek. As he has observed one cell structures like bacteria, protozoans and blood cells under microscope for the first time. Now regarding the cell theory, all the observations regarding the cell were clubbed and given in a theory that is named as a cell theory. Cell theory was actually proposed by two scientists that was M. J. Sheldon and T. Chavan in the year 1839. The outcomes of the modern cell theory are actually children. The modern cell theory can also be called as a cell principle or it can also be called as a cell doctrine. The major postulates of this cell doctrine are all the organisms are made up of cells Cells arise from pre-existing cells. And this particular statement, it was given by a scientist named as Rudolf Virchow. The third important statement for cell theory are, all the organisms start their life from a single cell. And the multiplication of cell and their growth leads to growth of an organism. Now regarding something related to microscopes, it is the practice of using microscope for the study of finer details of small objects including cells and tissues. Microscopes are the instruments consisting of lenses which magnify and resolve some objects not visible to unaided eye for the study of their details. A microscope has more than one lens. The early microscopes, the first laboratory microscope was developed by Robert Hooke in 1665 and he, it was simple and it had a combination of magnifying lenses fixed in a tube. Another simple but more powerful microscope was built by Leeuwenhoek in 1672 with the help of his Microscope, Leeuwenhoek made many discoveries ahead of his time. Regarding the structure of a microscope, the microscope used in the schools is called as compound microscope. It has an upper tubular part which is called as a body tube. It has magnifying lenses at both of its ends. The upper part has a magnifying lens which is called as an eyepiece and the lower part has two or three magnifying lenses attached which are called as the objectives. The object to be examined is placed on the stage under the objective. Light on the object is focused through the mirror and the object is seen through the eyepiece. Nowadays, highly developed kind of microscopes are used in, be, uh, in big government and private research centers for research and development purpose. These are called as electron microscopes. 
Under these objectives, a stage like structure, flat structure is present on which a slide is faced. And on that slide, we place the structure or whatever structure we want to observe under the microscope. And this is called as a stand of the microscope. This is the most simple compound microscope used in laboratories. Now next topic is cell shape. Actually the cells shows variability with respect to their shape and size in multicellular organisms. Shape of the cell may be variable that is it can be constantly changing uh, for example in case of amoeba and leukocytes. Variable shapes are found in amoeba, leukocytes that is white blood cells and cells can have a fixed shape also and those fixed shapes can be like Cells can be flattened like the skin cells. Cells can be columnar like the cells lining the intestine. The cells can be disc shaped which can be called as discoidal. And the most common example for this shape of cell is RBCs that is red blood cell of human beings. The cell can be spherical which is seen in most of the eggs of animals. The cells can be spindle shaped as in it is seen in the case of a smooth muscle fiber. Cells can be elongated as it is a case of nerve cell which is also called as neuron. So these were the different fixed shapes of the cells. Now we will come to the cell size. Regarding the cell size, the cell size varies from few micrometer to few centimeters. Uh, it can be very much small like 0.2 to 0.5 micrometer in case of bacteria and it can be too large as in case of ostrich. Now the smallest smallest cell known today is of a PPLO that is mycoplasma. Its size is around 0.1 to 0.5 micrometers. The largest cell known till today is the cell of the ostrich or we can say ostrich egg which is around 18 centimeters in diameter. The longest cell known till today is nerve cell and this is around 1 meter in length. Now the next topic after the cell size is the types of organisms on the basis of number of cells. Now the types of organisms on the basis of number of cells, organisms can be categorized as unicellular or they can be multicellular organisms. The unicellular organisms are those organisms which are made up of single cell only and this single cell performs all the vital body functions of an organism and the most common example for unicellular organisms is amoeba. If we talk about the multicellular organisms, multi means more, cellular means cells. These are the organisms which are made up of numerous cells. These cells then combine to form an organ and a group of organs performing different functions form an organ system which further forms an organism. So we can write it like this, like a group of cells combine to form tissue. Many tissues combine to form organs. Many organs, if they start functioning for a one particular function, that is called as organ system. And many organ systems are found in a complete individual organism. So in this way, this is a hierarchy of the multicellular organisms. And the most common example is all the plants and animals, multicellular plants and animals are included in this category. To explain this, let us elaborate this. As cell is the fundamental unit of life, similar cells they join together to form a particular tissue. Now similar tissues join together to form an organ, for example the stomach, liver etc. The various organs, now in a complex living organism many organs help to form a specific life function. All the organs that work together to perform a specific life function form an organ system. For example, the stomach, intestines, liver and pancreas are all organs that work together to perform digestion. Hence, they form the digestive system. 
The various organ systems such as digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system, nervous system and reproductive system, they all make up our living organism. So children, here we complete our first lecture about the cell. In the next lecture, we will come to the different organelles of the cell. Thank you children.